Let's take a brief look at the Sydney Character Pack DLC. This was the fifth, or sixth, so who's counting, Character Pack released for Payday 2, and it was one of the few paid characters to not be released alongside a heist, simply dropped into the game, fitting for the character herself. Uh, let me explain. Sydney is a 24-year-old Australian heister hailing from Melbourne and was part of her own gang called the Dingoes. After hearing of the Payday Gang's escapade, she decided to travel to DC in hopes of joining them. After crashing one of their heists and taking off off with a loot bag, Bane was apparently so impressed he decided to appoint her as a member. It's all a bit spontaneous and contrived, but that's hardly the first time a character has been suddenly added for no real reason. And besides, what matters most is how a character sounds. Put him up, okay. fuckwit! Don't shoot! Got a body bag case here! I got a medic bag right here. Hey, Control, my band The Sandwich Babies are playing on Friday. You really need to come check us out. It's gonna be a ripper of a show. Well, she's Australian, and has a lot to discuss in her pager lines about her life back home, which is lovely. However, I'm more impressed with her loud lines, as for the most part, they aren't the standard rinse and repeat, sniper just ate a bullet of mine, call me the cloaker smoker, I owe you a pint lines. I mean, she does still say things to that effect occasionally, but there are plenty more personalized lines mixed in there as well. Now, I know that there are some who take issue with her voice, namely due to the high-pitched delivery on certain lines. That's totally fair, I hate that too, but it's hardly a problem limited to Sydney. It's shared with characters like Clover and Jimmy as well. Overall, her contrived introduction feels cheap, but her unique voice lines, accent, and appearance make her one of the most standout characters in the game, and a personal favorite of mine. Of course, that's just my opinion, and I'm sure you feel differently. So let's look at some of the more objectively reviewable content, such as her perk deck, Anarchist. On the surface, this perk deck seems very complicated, but it's pretty simple when it's phrased like this. Grinder for armor. Effectively, half of your maximum HP is removed, multiplied by 1.2, and converted into armor. So, for instance, if your maximum HP is 230, which is fairly standard, you'll get a bonus of 138 armor. And this is added to your base armor stat, so even the two-piece suit will earn you a respectable 158 armor. This can be increased further depending on your skills and choice of Kevlar, all the way up to 400 armor with the ICTV! And it can get even higher with situational health boosts, namely partners in crime, increasing your maximum HP and thus armor. Of course, this isn't without downsides. Not only are you having your maximum HP, but you're completely changing the functionality of your armor's regeneration. It will no longer passively restore all at once after a set amount of time, as is the case with most perk decks. Instead, it will slowly restore itself over time in chunks. The bulkier the set of armor you have equipped, the larger the chunks. However, it balances itself out by increasing the delay between bursts of regeneration. And and it's not the end of the world if and when your armor breaks, as you'll earn two seconds of invincibility, giving you plenty of time to die for cover. Do be careful though, as not only does this effect have a 15 second cooldown, but with halved HP, a swift breeze will likely be enough to strike you down once your grace period runs dry. So, you have an absurd amount of armor, but it regenerates painfully slowly. You have two seconds of invincibility upon your Kevlar draining, but HP that's more ceremonial than functional. That sounds horrible, but this is where grind Grinder for armor comes in. Every time you deal damage, you restore 30 armor points. Now, you can only trigger this effect once every one and a half seconds, but when combined with Bullseye Aced for 25 armor upon headshot every two seconds, on a different timer altogether than Anarchist, that's three different sources of armor regeneration operating independently. One passive and two active. That's pretty fantastic, and all of this doesn't even consider the less obvious advantages to Anarchist, such as the measly 10 10% HP earned upon resurrection on higher difficulties being a non-issue when all the chips are down on armor, the wide variety of builds for varying difficulties made possible by the insanely high armor stats for lighter vests and armor, anarchist suit builds are a popular choice for instance, and most interestingly, the transporter skill. This skill gives you a 1% speed increase for every 10 points of armor you have. With 400 plus armor, that's like at least 10% faster or something, I don't know math, that's why I'm a YouTuber. So, the idea of grinding for armor rings true, provided you have a firearm that can pump lead out fast enough and consistently enough to keep yourself topped off. Thankfully, the Sydney character pack has a solution, in theory. The bootleg rifle boasts an absurd 100 mag capacity right out of the box, with accuracy and stability, while not groundbreaking, high enough to keep your aim true when modified. This gun just feels good to use, it's visually unique, it sounds powerful, and again, has the highest mag capacity of any assault rifle in Payday 2. 
too. It's almost like a light machine gun that does less damage, has less max ammo, can't be mounted on a bipod, and you're starting to see the problem. As much as I enjoy this weapon, it's not powerful enough to be a light machine gun, nor versatile enough to be an assault rifle. It's stuck somewhere in the middle, and not in a good, compromise sort of way. If it had more than one spare mag in reserve, reloaded faster, dealt more damage, or was just more accurate and stable, I could see some advantage to it. But as it is currently, you'd be better off sticking with a quad stacked mag on a far more capable rifle, or just using the more potent LMG to accomplish the same goal. Constant damage output. Speaking of constant damage output, a melee weapon! Obviously that's sarcasm for this weapon more than any other. The wing butterfly knife, while fancy with its engravings and animations, is painfully slow. It can't deal damage fast enough to be useful as anything other than a pretty pile of scrap. And that's just about everything. So, was the Sydney character pack a good addition? Sure, Sydney as a character is objectively unique and subjectively a treat. I understand some of the grievances that some of you may have with her, but personally, I simply enjoy the fresh take on a heister. Anarchist is still one of the best and most creative perk decks in all of Payday as far as I'm concerned, and the bootleg, while not quite relevant post-LMG buff, is still a standout rifle simply for its creative design. I guess that's how I'd describe this whole pack. Creative. Nothing in it feels standard in terms of appearance, functionality, or design. It's far and away the most unique character pack in all of Payday 2. Does that mean it's the best? Well, no. Diverging from the norm is not inherently a positive thing. Does that mean it's horrible? Again, no, as being an outlier is not inherently a negative thing. It means what it means. It's unique, creative, and standout. You can take that as you will, but personally, I enjoy the breath of fresh air. And I know that some of you will think I'm biased as I've befriended Sydney's voice actress, Georgia Van Collenberg. And it's true that she's one of the nicest people I've ever talked to, but I did my best to keep my opinions on the character unbiased by my opinions on the actress. Just some disclosure for you. That'll be it from me, and hey, if you liked the video, maybe consider subscribing? Either way, thanks for watching, and take it easy!